let's take a look at a quick start for functions as a service and we'll use playwithdocker.com as a way of launching a free host on the cloud not having to pay for it and not having to worry about cleaning it up afterwards we'll get around four hours of usage time but before we do that I'll just say a few words about the project it's an implementation of of serverless functions and it's written in Golang and they're specifically designed to leverage Docker Swarm mode. Um, there are several implementations like this. Not all of them use Docker Swarm, um, but this specifically tries to use those features and what we find in um, Docker 113. We use Docker Stacks, which use a Compose 3, 3 format to allow us to find upfront all of the services we want to run on the same overlay network. And effectively, it means that the sample we're about to see can be completely set up in three commands. Um, I've also built in Prometheus metrics and logging, so we'll be able to have a look at a graph as we fire off events into our um, functions. And the kind of events that, that we're looking at right now are things like GitHub webhooks. So when you commit code or an issue is raised, code might be invoked that would do code analysis or maybe even post some messages to Flowdoc or Slack. There are implementations of S3 which can generate webhooks such as Minio and that is another example. So if you need to monitor when people push to a bucket you can get notification messages and then again things like Jenkins um, builds are a, a prime for getting events. Um, so let's have a look open the tab from this gist and we go through the capture so the clock's counting down we can add up to four to five instances here we only need one for the demo and to start with we would do a enablement of docker swarm now this is so that we can use the stack features because there's multiple interfaces, we need to type in the specific interface we want Swarm to broadcast on. For this environment, we should use the 10.IP address. If you're doing this at home, you may not have more than one IP. You, you may not need to do this. We're then going to clone the code. and enter a directory. We then see that we just have a single batch file to run and that loads up a docker compose file. So if we take a quick look at that, we'll see that there are a bunch of different services here. One is the gateway. That's where all of the API calls come in. We have Prometheus which provides built-in metrics and then we've got three events each which do something quite small just enough to demo uh, the concept we have a webhook stash which will save any webhooks it receives into a file and we have hub stats which goes off to the docker hub and finds out how many stars someone has um, on a repository or how many repositories they have node info will return you statistics about the machine that's running your code. On playwithdocker.com it's quite a big machine, it has many CPUs and we'll see that. So let's run the deploy. Now that's the end of the quick start and it tells us to go over to the main tutorial and if we have a look here it shows us a number of ways of looking at that stack one of those is docker stack ls. If you've worked with docker services you will remember there is an, a similar command of docker service ls. The stack gives us a benefit of grouping that all together and then we also have docker stack ps which shows us all of the services that begin, belong to that stack. And We can see that they're actually running 
They've already been pulled from the internet. Um, this machine, this host is running on AWS, so it's got a very fast connection. So if you look at the tutorial, it mentions localhost 9090. That would be your machine at home. Um, and we see the first example is a Docker Hub stats. We'll go ahead and we would be sending a curl command, and this is a post into the function of hub stats. So we'll paste this over here. But what we need to do is we need a, a URL. Fortunately, Play with Docker gives us that. So if we look at the host up here and the port, we've got um, 8080 is the gateway. So we'll open that up and paste it. At this point in time, we should be able to hit enter and this will give us how many repositories I've created on the Docker Hub. And you see I've got 101, which is quite a few. And then we can take a look at the official images by looking at library. So what just happened? Um, well, we sent a func we, we sent some um, some text, just Alex Ellis two, over the wire into a API gateway. The gateway has then decided what swarm service it needed, which was called Funk Hub Stats. It sent that into the um, the service. The service responded, and we've had the response brought all the way back out to us. We can have a look at the logs. So this is a bit more verbose than you may be used to. But if we look at Docker logs and find the gateway container, we see the requests are coming here on the logs. We can run this in once more. And each time you get to see how long it's taking, and if you if you want to, you can use something like um, like bash. We can do a while loop, and we'll get requests generated at quite a fast rate. It is possible to scale up any of these services, so the functions that we have can be scaled and we can take advantage of multiple hosts. But let's take a look at what other functions there are. And with all of these, you can hack them, you can edit them. There's no, um, there's no need to stick to these. They're just there as an example. Let's try the webhook stash. So this would be something like you want to test your integration with GitHub, um, or you just want to test that your events are being generated. And all I've changed is the name of the function. And I'm passing in a JSON piece of data here, which is completely fake. And there we go. It stashed that request for us. That will be kept on the hard drive of the container. So if we take a look, inside the file system. We can use docker exec to find. And we've got three files there. So let's run it in once more. And you see the fourth file arrive. Now, another neat um, function to run here, and you can actually run this type of thing on AWS Lambda as well, um, will let us see exactly what hardware we're running against. Before I hit enter here, let's just see what the code is doing. So this is a Node.js application. It requires an OS package and then prints out the platform, the architecture, how many CPUs there are, and the uptime. And again, with all of these examples, if you're running on your local computer, you just use localhost. If you'll play with Docker, make sure you use the URL here. And so there we are. Username is root. 
home directory is root, the shell is ash, and a quite a few CPUs here. We could do a quick count. So it looks like we've got 16 CPUs available. It's quite a good machine. Now that function didn't do anything with the input, but the hub stats did. It read in the username and then it processed. And so what happens is all of the input is read through standard in, which is a pipe, and any, any output your function needs is written out through standard out. So please have a look at the examples. If you can suggest any that sound, sound cool, I'd be really happy to uh, merge them as a PR. And then we've also got some Alexa skills here, which um, will do similar things. So I have one here that can count the docker captains. We take a look at the handler for it. And once you've, um, once you've inv invocated it, basically goes off to the docker website, counts a number of HTML elements it can find and returns them back to you. And that is in the Alexa format, it's a JSON request and so you can offload all of your processing to your own network um, rather than having to rely on a Lambda function if that's what you want to do. Now I said that we have metrics available so let's have a look at those. The metrics are available on the same port as the API gateway but you need to put forward slash metrics. Prometheus is already set up and it has a configuration that points here and we have basic statistics like the total number of requests, um, how many invocations we've had and how long in seconds everything has taken. What that allows us to do is to see the average time that the um, functions take to run and we can get extra information like what is the rate of increase that they've been run at. But before we do that, let's go back to play with Docker and find port 9090 where the Prometheus UI is running. Now the last thing we ran was the node info function and we did a count on it. So let's do the same thing again. And we'll have a look at the metrics before and after. Here's the total requests we've had, 24. Run this in once. And the, the uh, Prometheus metric is being scraped every 15 seconds. So it'll take a little bit to update. But you can see we already have some data over the last 15 minutes that we've been recording this um, demo. We could also smooth this out by looking at the rate of increase of requests. Okay, and now this is giving us a, a bit more of an interesting picture than just a straight graph of the count. Now the count will always go up, just to prove it. It looks a bit like this, but actually probably what's more interesting is to see the rate that it increased. Now, if we were to take the total duration of all of the function executions, so the sum, and then we divide it by the other value, the amount, we'll get something that looks a bit like the average time of execution. So we have a peak here of about 0 0.5 seconds. We have some very quick invocations as well. And we probably can find an average out of this. So this graph is showing us one by one. What if we were to go back to our do loop, our while true, and then put something like a sleep in there as well. we should see this live update on the graph. Now you could choose your Prometheus metrics to, um, to be scraped at a higher interval. I think probably for testing 15 seconds is okay. 
and we can see already that the rate of increase has gone up and it's going to be consistent it's going to be a standard increase what we could do is run two of these at the same time and once we get over that 15 second lag we'll see everything increasing and down here even the invocation time seems to be getting smaller so remember we had 15 CPUs perhaps we could scale one of these services it might give us better performance so we know that we're using hubstats and let's scale it something like six and once those containers have started these replicas we should experience a slightly better response time with multiple callers this obviously also depends on how quick the the docker hub is um, because we're sending our requests over to the hub but you could imagine that um, auto scaling could work really well for this particularly if you know that you're tracking github um, issues or you're tracking webhooks from something that's generating sporadic load but potentially a lot of load you'd want to be able to scale your function up to handle that um, on demand and as you can see here we now have quite a quick rate of increase and our average duration is still decreasing and we'll probably hit a baseline which will be the speed that it takes for the server to respond um, to this message I'm sure there are probably other metrics we could add to this. Um, I'd like to get some feedback. So if there's something that you think will be really useful, please um, send it across. And I, any ideas you've got for sample functions, the, um, the framework is documented here. It's quite a bit of detail about how to create your own function on the blog post. Um, which, please check that out again, which is over on blog.alexellis.io and it details my first attempts at serverless and then goes on to talk about the webhook stasher thanks for watching this deep dive on serverless swarm and docker 113 you can get in touch with me on twitter or through the comment section on the blog